Ron here guys and today we are talking about the Runcam Nano Racer 2. Runcam, one time lord of the racing cameras. One time, we'll see about that. And now is probably the fifth, sixth year that Runcam and Foxy are having a knock down knuckle drag on fight to determine who has the best racing camera and i've thrown this nano racer 2 into one of my favorite builds this is my mayday fusion uh, with the front brace and uh, tpu pod and i took the vanover camera out put this thing in because i i'm really trying to as much as i can shift over to nano size cameras because they're a little bit lighter a little bit um, less weight and this really offered one of the best images that i've seen um and you know now with the dji system out things like image and latency are really turned upside down what we took to be the best image before is no longer the best image because there's nothing better than dji but you can still strive to get strive to get the best colors the best resolution the best latency and really allow you to see the most things right if you can see the most things on the track you can have the best racing performance possible and you don't necessarily need to see everything in hd you just need to be able to see your obstacle and of course avoid any ghost branches now uh this thing uh, I would have to say is probably right up there. It is a 1000 TV line camera with ultra low latency. Of course, Runcam again delivers their great package to allow you to um, have an adapter that comes with this camera that allows you to adapt nano to micro size. So a lot of these frames um, that you have, unless they were created in 2020 or so, are going to have a micro size camera but that's no issue now when i first saw the release of this i noticed it had the old camera connector back on the back whereas the nano racer one had the little pigtail coming straight off with the connector on it and i was like that's a step back i actually like the pigtail i like having the camera connector separate from the camera body itself that allows you to be able to get these in a little bit of a tighter stack and it allows you to be able to easily take the camera on and off if you're doing any repairs out in the field or even at home without having to really yank on the back of that. It's just so much easier to manage. And the Nano Racer 1 also had the separate little pigtail off on the side that allowed you to connect your um, little camera board controller to adjust the settings, turn off the OSD fields that are a super pain. This one only came with the run cam label on the OSD by default. Um, so at least they turned the other two garbage ones off. And, uh, but what I noticed was really cool is that it does have the connector, but it comes with this little dongle. So you have the connector, you put the dongle in there and that has both the three pin camera, um, female port that you can attach your camera connector into as well as the two port camera controller thing that are external so essentially you kind of have the best of both worlds you have the external plug to be able to plug it you can plug it straight in if you want to save that little bit of extra weight and then you have an easily accessible way to be able to control your settings uh, and that is absolutely great now the image on this thing as you can see is really really special uh, man, this is really, between this and the Predator 4, they're both really, really good. Uh, I think I'll make another video where I really com compare and contrast those, but image-wise, they're both outstanding. It really kind of depends on which color palette you prefer the most, almost like it's, it's that close. Um, so this is not the cheapest option, but when you're racing and you only really need two or three of these, um, because you just need one for your primary, one for your backup quad, and then, you know, maybe a third one. I'd say it's worth the investment. A lot of things are getting cheaper these days. 
our VTXs are getting cheaper, our flight controllers are getting cheaper, the ESCs are getting cheaper, the motors are definitely getting cheaper. So you can really afford to spend just a little bit more on your camera because after all that is dictating what you're actually seeing through. And this one really combined with Crossfire gave me the latency that is super low across the board. And I'm, I'm thinking this is probably my favorite going into 2020. Uh, now I will compare against the Nano Racer 1, which I also did really feel is like a great camera. I feel like this one has a slight edge, but if you have those, you can make the call. Do you need to get rid of all those and, and upgrade across the board? I think I'm going to have a couple of these for my main quads, but on all the rest, the original is still really, really good. What do you think guys in the comments? What racing camera are you going with across the board and what freestyle camera? Got a couple of freestyle cameras coming up on the channel as well. Um, let me know guys. Thanks.